Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to the Console 6. I am your host, G.A. Longaro, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this journey through the rich and storied history of the Forgotten Realms. As a passionate fan of Dungeons & Dragons and an experienced dungeon master, I've spent countless hours exploring the many wonders of this incredible world. From the towering spires of Waterdeep to the misty swamps of the Moonshay Isles, there's no shortage of adventure to be had. Also, in addition to our regular video content like this video here, we also host live streams of our own D&D campaign twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. So if you're looking for a bit of excitement and want to join us on our adventures, be sure to tune in and follow us on all our social media channels as well. And of course, if you enjoy our content, please remember to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and share them with your fellow adventurers. Your support means the world to us and it helps us to continue creating high quality content for all of you. So without any further ado, let's dive into the rich and complex history of the Forgotten Realms. Welcome back to our series on the history of Toro, the world of Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms. In the last episode, we went over the Saruk. Today we'll be exploring the in-depth history and lore of one of the Saruk's chief rivals, the Petrachi, a race of frog-like creatures that were one of the many creator races that shaped the world of Toro. The Petrachi were a race of amphibians that lived in the swamps and marshlands of the world during the Age of Thunder. They were one of the most advanced and powerful of the creator races, and their empire spanned across much of the known world. The Batraji were known for their advanced knowledge of magic as well as their impressive technological advancements. They finally were able to rise to power in minus 33500DR after the fall of most of the Saruk empires, outcompeting the Wanti remnants in Marashaluk, ensuring they would never reach the heights of their creators. The Batraji had a hierarchical society with powerful leaders known as Archmages who ruled over the lesser case and were also known for their fierce military with a vast army of soldiers, powerful mages, and fearsome war beasts. They had a highly stratified society with the rigid case system that divided them based on their skills and abilities and was a highly prejudicial system based on their skin tones. The different cases were defined by the Batrachi skin color which varied from a deep green to brown to black. At the top of the case system were the ruling class who were born with black skin. They held all the political and military power and were responsible for governing the empire. They were also the only ones allowed to mate with other members of the ruling caste. Below the ruling class were the brown-skinned priests and scholars. They were responsible for maintaining the religious and cultural traditions of the Batrachi, as well as conducting research and developing new technologies. The green-skinned artisan caste were responsible for building and maintaining the empire's infrastructure, including roads, bridges, and buildings. They were also responsible for producing goods for the empire. At the bottom of the case system were the workers, who were born with light green or yellowish green skin. They were responsible for menial tasks such as farming, mining, and cleaning. Of course, this was also supplemented with the other races that the Batrachi created later on. The Batrachi case system was designed to maintain social order and stability, but it also resulted in a significant degree of inequality and oppression. The ruling class had absolute power over the lower case, and there was little opportunity for upward mobility or social mobility. Despite its flaws, the Batrachi case system allowed the Empire to function effectively for thousands of years. It ensured that everyone had a specific role to play in society and there was a division of labor that allowed the Empire to flourish. Much like the Saruk, the Batrachi civilization was divided into several kingdoms, each with its own ruling dynasty. Unlike the Saruk though, the Batrachi kingdoms were not as sprawling and did not take over most of the continent, therefore the legends are quite vague on when they were founded and when they fell. However, we do know a handful of notable kingdoms within the Batrachi Empire. Colophon was one of the largest and most powerful of the Batrachi kingdoms. It was ruled by the powerful House of Azerite. The kingdom was known for its vast armies and strong navy, which it used to conquer and subjugate neighboring lands. A smaller Batrachi kingdom located in the southern region of their empire, Guatemala, was ruled by the House of Topaz. The kingdom was known for its skilled craftsmen and artisans, who produced some of the finest works of art and architecture in the Batrachi Empire. Nethesda was located in the northern region of the empire and was ruled by the House of Amethyst. Nethesda was known for its advanced knowledge of magic and alchemy, and many of the most powerful Batrachi sorcerers came from this kingdom. Zakoidine, named after the great Batrachi leader who had unified the various kingdoms into a single empire, was the capital of the Batrachi Empire. The kingdom was ruled by the House of Ruby and was known for its grand palaces and magnificent temples. The leader Zakoidine, also known as the High One, was a legendary Batrachi leader who played a significant role in the history of his people. He was said to be a powerful sorcerer and a brilliant military strategist. According to the Batrachi legends, Zakoidine was born in a time of great turmoil when the Batrachi were facing threats from both within and outside their empire. 
Under Zakoidine's leadership, the Batrachi Empire expanded rapidly, conquering neighboring lands and subjugating other races. He is said to have been a strict but just ruler, and his reign was marked by a period of peace and prosperity for the Batrachi. He rose to power by uniting the disparate tribes and waging a series of successful campaigns against their enemies. However, there was a crushing failed campaign that basically caused the end of Batrachi against the Titans of Jotunburnd. We will discuss this in a later video. Like the Saruk, the Batrachi were skilled in the art of creating life, and they were responsible for the creation of several races on Toril. One of their earliest creations was the Bullywugs. The Bullywugs were bred to be fierce warriors and skilled hunters, with their powerful legs allowing them to move quickly through the water and their sharp tongues capable of delivering a deadly blow. The Batrachi also gave them a natural affinity for magic, allowing them to harness the elemental powers of water. Initially, the Bullywugs were fiercely loyal to their creators and served in as a powerful army in the Batrachi's wars against the other creator races. However, when the Batrachi fell from power, the Bullywugs were left to fend for themselves and eventually became a scattered and disorganized race. The Lokatha were an aquatic race created by the Batrachi to be used as laborers and warriors in their empire. They were amphibious and with the ability to breathe both air and water and were well adapted to the life in the oceans and rivers of Toril. The Batrachi designed the Lokatha to be physically strong and resilient with tough scales and powerful muscles that made them excellent swimmers and fighters. They were also highly intelligent and capable of learning advanced tactics and strategies, which made them valuable assets in battle. As a result of their creation of by the Batrachi, the Lokatha became an integral part of the Empire and were used extensively in both military and civilian roles. They helped to build and maintain the vast underwater cities of the Batrachi and also served as soldiers in their armies, using their formidable strength and intelligence to defeat their enemies. After the downfall of the Batrachi, the Lokatha continued to thrive in the oceans and rivers of Toril, developing their own society and culture. They maintained their strength and resilience and continued to be highly skilled in warfare and underwater combat. They were known to be fierce defenders of their territory and were often respected and feared by other races that lived near water. Lastly, the Batrachi also created the Kopru, a race of amphibious creatures with slimy tentacles who were skilled in psychic abilities. They were originally designed to serve as guardians and protectors of the Batrachi underwater cities, but many became a servant race for the Batrachi. Eventually, they established their own civilization within the depths of the ocean. Despite their treacherous nature, the Kopru continued to thrive in the underwater world long after the Batrachi were gone. They were known to manipulate and control other underwater creatures and were feared by many as a result of their telepathic abilities and insidious tactics. Overall, the Batrachi's creations had a significant impact on the history of Toril and many of these races continue to play an important role in the present day. The decline of the Batrachi was a much steeper and more disastrous one than it was for the Saruk. Zokoidin was a renowned sorcerer, and despite his many achievements, bad decisions would end his reign and that of the Batrachi. The war with the Titans was going horribly, and around minus 31 500 DR, Zokoidin would fall in battle to the Titan Thane Omo. A Batrachi lord, Bazim Gorag, would later call Zokoidin a fool, who unwisely made war against Jotunbrud and lost the empire. The later decisions of Basim and the other Batrachi lords would end up being far more devastating. Around minus 3100 DR, in their desperation to end the war with the Titans, the Batrachi conducted a daring experiment that would ultimately lead to their downfall. Seeking to harness the power of the imprisoned primordial Asgaroth, they devised a plan to release him from his imprisonment deep within the Earth. Using powerful magic and their vast knowledge of the arcane, the Batrachi managed to shatter the wards that held Asgaroth in place, but in doing so, they unleashed a catastrophic event known as Tearfall. Asgroth was one of the mighty primordials, chief adversaries of the gods who were in constant war with them during the Days of Thunder for control and dominance. There's much to unpack with the primordials and the gods, which stretches back to the creation era legends, and to the fact that Toril is actually one of two twin worlds ultimately split between the two. This again is a story for another video. For the purpose of this video, just know that the primordials were as powerful as the gods. The release of Asgaroth caused a massive earthquake that shook the entire world of Toril. The skies turned dark and massive storm raged across the land, raining destruction and chaos upon the Batrachi and their enemies alike. Asgaroth, the world shaper, determined to destroy the world if she couldn't control it, threw an ice moon at the planet, creating the sea of fallen stars in what was once the kingdom of Kulifu. In the present age, scholars from Candlekeep have a theory that those natural catastrophes were the consequences of the ice moon that fell from the sky and devastated much of the planet, and referred to this event as the Tear Fall, or also known as the First Sundering. According to their theory, the dramatic climate change that followed quickly brought to an end to the Batrachi civilization and allowed the rapid evolution of proto-dragons into various dragon species. Nobody knows for sure if Asgaroth actually threw dragon eggs to the world when she cast down the ice moon, 
although dragons revere Asgroth as their creator of their race. This will be of vital importance to what happens in the next Age of Toro, the Dawn Age, which will be covered here in later videos. The devastation caused by Tearfall was immense, and it signaled the beginning of the end for the once great Batrachi Empire. Their enemies, sensing weakness and opportunity, began to attack, and the Batrachi found themselves fighting a war on multiple fronts. Despite their best effort, the Batrachis were unable to halt the tide of destruction that had been unleashed upon them. They fought valiantly, but in the end, their civilization was brought to its knees, and they were forced to flee into the shadows, which ends up with a much more ominous fate. Facing the extreme climate change, a cold period called the Seven Turn Winter caused by Tearfall, many Batrachi, among them Bazan Gorag, left Toro for the plain of Limbo. Now again, just a brief explanation. The universe of Forgotten Realms consists of many planes of existence. The material plane where Toro resides being just one of them. Limbo is another one of these planes. I plan on doing another series explaining the planes of existence later, but for now, just know that Limbo is another plane outside of Toro. In Limbo, the Batrachi were transformed and mutated by their god Ramanos to serve his agenda. They created what became known as the Supreme Throne as their kingdom in Limbo. Bazangord ascended as a Slod Lord and became known as the Firebringer, a harbinger of conflagration and ruin, a destructive elemental force who sought to set the realms on fire and watch it burn. In conclusion, the Batrachi were renowned for their powerful magic and their ability to create new races including the Lokatha, the Bullywugs, and the Kopru. However, their downfall came at the hands of their own arrogance as they released the primordial Asgaroth leading to the catastrophic event known as Tearfall. Despite their fall from grace, the Batrachi left a lasting impact on the world of Toro. Their legacy can be seen in many races they created, as well as the ruins of their once great cities. Their story is a cautionary tale of the dangers of pride and the consequences of meddling with powerful forces beyond one's control. And that closes the chapter on the Batrachi. We hope this video has piqued your interest in the rich history and legends of the Forgotten Realms. Again, while you're here, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe button, and share this with your other adventuring friends so we can get more eyes on the channel so other people can learn about this stuff as well along with us. Join us for our next episode where we'll be exploring the Eri in greater detail, delving into their culture and the impact and legacy they left behind. Thank you for joining us on this journey and until next time, so say we all.